If you're looking to bake a romantic dessert that makes a lasting impression, well, you have to try my white chocolate mousse cake with mirror glaze. Oh, it is over the top. Beautiful on the outside, rich and creamy inside, and with a little surprise of raspberry jelly. But it starts with the cake. The base of this mousse cake is a chocolate cake, single layer. So you just whip the cake up by hand, and I'll start by sifting my dry ingredients. A cup of granulated sugar, then three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder, and a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And now for the liquids, I have half a cup of buttermilk, half a cup of hot coffee, a quarter cup of vegetable oil, a single egg, and a teaspoon of vanilla. I do love that this cake is easy to make, so I can focus my time and attention on making the mousse and especially the mirror glaze. First you whisk to combine and then just by hand, you wanna whisk a little more vigorously, make sure there are no lumps. Now, I only need one cake layer for this recipe. The recipe makes two, simply because cutting this recipe in half is just a silly small amount of cake batter. So I bake both off and you can simply freeze one because I know you're going to be making this cake again. I've greased my two cake pans and these are eight inch cake pans. The sides are dusted with flour and the bottoms lined with parchment. The cakes take 30 minutes in a 350 oven. And that leaves me time to make the raspberry jelly. So this raspberry jelly layer is nestled right inside the white chocolate mousse cake. To make the jelly, the first thing I'll do is pour three tablespoons of cold water over a teaspoon and a half of gelatin and just let that sit for a few minutes. I have half a cup of raspberry puree. So all I did was take some frozen raspberries, thaw them, puree them and strain them to take out the seeds. I'll add that to my pot, along with two thirds of a cup of sugar. And lastly, three tablespoons of honey. I'll heat this to dissolve the sugar and honey. So this raspberry jelly is not the kind you would spread on your toast, but is more of a set jelly, like a confection. It stays nice and tender, so when you cut through the white chocolate mousse, the jelly and the cake, the consistency all matches. There we go, just the sign of bubbles. So I'll take this off the heat. And in just that minute, my gelatin has softened, absorbing the water. And you add this all at once. And you'll see it immediately turns glossy. And there we go, how easy is that, making jelly? Now, the trick is to get a beautiful shape. So you wanna take a round bowl, no bigger than eight inches across, that has a nice curve at the bottom. You lightly grease it and line it with plastic wrap. And then you pour the warm jelly in. And what I'll do is let this cool to room temperature and then I'll freeze it. I work with the components and essentially the cake is a whole frozen, even though it's not served frozen. I'll set that aside. Now it's time to make the white chocolate mousse. I have three quarters of a cup of whipping cream that I'm going to bring up to a full simmer. I have 10 ounces, 10 ounces of white chocolate chopped up and I'll add to that one tablespoon of gelatin powder that I've soaked in a quarter cup of cool water. So I just spoon the gelatin right on top of the chocolate. That way when I pour over the hot cream, the hot cream does all the work. Pour this over the chocolate, and I'll just let it sit for a second. You can do this in a blender or a food processor, or you can use an immersion blender if you wish. Now, just on a medium speed. That 10 ounces of chocolate has managed to cool this mixture a little bit, but you want to cool it to just above room temperature, and that can take about 30 minutes. So I'll just let this set. After 30 minutes, you'll notice that your cooled white chocolate base does thicken up a little bit. 
If you find this has set up too much where it's not fluid at all, you can just remelt it and let it cool down again. All right, now for the whipped cream. I've already whipped up one and a quarter cups of whipping cream to a peak, and I'm gonna fold this in in two additions. I like to use a whisk to really work it through the white chocolate quickly. Now, the cold cream is going to start setting up the white chocolate, so you wanna move quickly, and don't be afraid when you see it liquefy like this. This is part of the recipe. You actually want it to be pourable. And there we go. I've got my mousse nice and smooth. Cooled cake. And while I baked my cake in an eight inch pan, I'm using a nine inch springform pan to assemble the cake. And now for the raspberry jelly out of the freezer. The first thing to do is pour half of this white chocolate mousse into the pan. It should be fluid enough that you don't have to spread it, but just give it a swirl so that it coats the bottom perfectly. And then, this could be a little bit sticky, but just work with the jelly to take it out of the plastic wrap. Drop this and press it gently into the mousse. The curve of the bowl is facing down now. You don't want to press the jelly down too far because you want that layer of white chocolate mousse at the bottom. Now I cover this with the remaining mousse. And now my chocolate cake layer, it goes in upside down. And then I like to drop in my cardboard cake board now so it all stays in place. Now I'll wrap this and then freeze it overnight. You want to give it a good six hours at least to freeze before you put on the mirror glaze, which is actually the best part of this cake. The crowning glory of this romantic dessert is the white chocolate mirror glaze. So shiny, you could practically see your reflection in it. And it's kind of fun to make too. I have 12 ounces, yes. So this whole cake has 22 ounces of white chocolate in it. 12 ounces of chopped white chocolate. And I've softened two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of gelatin powder in a third of a cup of cool water. So just like the mousse, I'm going to put the gelatin on top of the white chocolate. And to build on the shine, I have a combination of ingredients, starting with two thirds of a cup of condensed milk. So you get the sense, even just from the condensed milk, of the consistency of the glaze. It has this sort of shiny, syrupy character to it. I have three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and two thirds of a cup of water. I'll stir this together and bring it to a full boil and just let it cook for a minute. Other than the bubbles breaking the surface, you won't see any change to this hot liquid. But after a minute, I'll pull it off the heat and pour it over my chocolate. Now, what's very important when you're making a mirror glaze is to try and avoid air bubbles. So when you use your immersion blender, you want to use it on low speed. That way you're not working any air into it and try not lifting the immersion blender above the glaze itself. There we go, now it's nice and smooth. What I need to do to help get rid of the air bubbles on the surface is strain it just slowly through a strainer into another container. As fine a strainer as you have. Because of the white chocolate, we've got a beautiful buttery color here. Now, if you wanted to tint your glaze, you can add white coloring to your mirror glaze, and then that makes it take clean color as well. So now that I have the white blended into my glaze, I'm going to do two tones of pink and keep some of this white glaze. The next step in this process is to wait. You need to cool your mirror glaze to between 80 and 86 Fahrenheit or 27 to 30 Celsius. This is the moment we've been building towards. The glaze has cooled, so now it's time for the big pour. Now what I'll do is I'll pour my light pink into the white, slowly and carefully, not stirring. Then I finish with the darker color. So no matter how many colors you use, you always start lightest, go to darkest, 
Then I'll just simply pour it on top of my unwrapped frozen cake and watch it drip away. The colors blend as I swirl and swish. I start at the center and then spiral outward. After the glaze has had a chance to set for about 10 minutes, then you can just run a palette knife to clear off these edges, put it on your presentation plate and keep it chilled until it's time for that magic moment. Oh, the romance. And just think for a chocolate lover, this is one decadent cake. 22 ounces of white chocolate, that raspberry jelly, the chocolate cake underneath. But really, it's all about the gesture of baking to share with those you love.